Welcome back guys to Kids Coding Playground and today we'll be making a two player pong game with the AI. So maybe like about a year ago we made a uh, pong game for two players but this time we're going to improve the game and add an AI to it as well and some new improved features like making the ball move quicker when you go um, when you play for a longer time stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to make a more advanced version today. So let me show you guys the demonstration of this. So you can either do player versus player or player versus AI. Let's turn on the volume a little. Alright, so player versus player is just going to pong, like as usual. Like this, first to seven wins. First to seven points, alright. So player versus AI. So as you can see, I'm the right side here. So, okay, so you see the AI? So the AI is like, it tries to follow like the position of the ball. And once you play for like over 20 seconds or something like that, then they will increase the speed of the ball. As you can see, the ball speed is increased. As If you can see that, yeah. So. Also, you can open the timer right here, as you can see. You play it. Like when the timer reaches a certain amount, it resets the timer every single time uh, the point is over, but as you can see when the timer gets to 20, it will, the ball will speed up. And they just get there. Alright, so now it's 20 seconds, as you can see the ball moves a little bit quicker. So yeah, um, we will be creating new project. Let's create a new project. Okay, so first let's delete the scratch cat and upload our backdrop. So this will be in the link in the description. So I actually have a uh, something from my backpack. This backdrop, so we, we're going to be using this one. It looks like a real like ping pong table, I guess. And then we have the two uh, paddles. This one's for player one or the AI. And this is the player two. Alright, so that's it for the thing so i'll show you guys how to use it how to like draw it so if you want to draw your own i'm going to show you how to like draw it i guess so they actually already have a paddle in the sprite library if you want to use that you, you can use that one or you can use our own so what we did was just draw a paddle like it was just oops let me center it again so it's just like a green uh square but then we have some like brown outline around it so that's pretty much it it's pretty simple to draw you can make it any color you want it doesn't have to be green i guess yeah, it's pretty simple to draw. I don't think you'll have any problem with that. And then we have uh, the buttons. So let's get the buttons. So let me find it. Alright, button one. Let me just duplicate this and then we can get two buttons. So this button one, I'll name it player versus player. Okay. So this button one is PvP. Player versus player. We're going to like. Uh, Let's put like a text right here. So maybe make it red so it's easier to see. PVP. Oops. So we have the PVP. Let's make it bigger. Center. Alright, so now we have the PVP button. And then we can do a player versus AI. So we can name it like P V AI. Maybe like P V S maybe P V S A I. Yeah, that looks better. That looks better. I'm gonna change the other one too. This makes it look a little better. Let me shrink it a little bit. You can hold down Alt so it won't like move everywhere. Change this to player V S player and make it a little bit smaller. There you go. So now I have the two buttons, player versus player, and player versus AI. Alright, so we're going to first start on the buttons with the coding. So we're going to start on the player versus player. So let's go to the code. And in the beginning, we're going to make it go to this position. I already have the position down. So I'm going to go to negative 75. Zoom in. Negative 75, Y90. That's the position I had from the game. And I'm going to show the uh, sprite in the beginning and then when this sprite is clicked we are going to that, uh, when the sprite is clicked we're going to broadcast a message 
called P vs P. So player versus player. And we're going to hide. So once you click the button, we're going to hide it. And then we're going to go to the second button, the button 2. I'm going to rename it to P PV, PVS AI. Let me change the other name as well to PVS P. So player versus player and player versus AI. So let's go to the other button. So in the other button, we are going to get a one green flag clicked. We're going to go to the 75, and then we're going to 90, and then we're going to show. And when the sprite is clicked, we're going to broadcast another message called PVSAI. PVSAI. And then we're going to hide. So when the player clicks on player versus player, we want to hide this sprite as well. So when I receive player versus player, we are going to hide here. And vice versa for the other one, player versus player, we are going to, when I receive player versus AI, we are going to hide. Alright. Now we can go to the paddles. Also, I forgot to add the ball, sorry about that. We need to add the ball, obviously, so we can just get that from here. Ball. Uh, how big should it be, honestly? Maybe like 20? No, it's too small. Maybe like... 50, yeah, that's probably better. 50, 50 is probably the right size for the ball. So now we have the ball sprite. And then, so now we're going to go to our paddle, player one or AI paddle. So in the beginning, actually, let's code for the ball first. Because in the ball, we have uh, we have some code that we, we're going to broadcast something into the player, the paddles. So, oops. Sorry about that. Alright, let's go to the ball. Now start coding in here. Okay, so now we're in the ball. Let's start coding in here. So, as you can see, I clicked the play button so I can make both the buttons like go to their position. So this is the position where they are. Alright, so let's start coding in here. So, when I receive the message, let's see, when I receive the message player versus player, we're going to broadcast a message. Called start game. Start game, and then we're going to when I receive player versus AI, we're going to broadcast start game, and then we are going to broadcast a message, another message. So we'll need this for later, not for now, but it's going to be called ball position, ball position, and we're going to make some more variables. We're going to make two variables. Player, oops, player one score for all sprites, and we're also going to make a, another variable called player two score. So player one score, player two score. And then, so we're going to get a when green flag clicked, we're going to set the player one score to zero, and we're going to set the player two score to zero, and we're going to set the size to 50%. Like I have, so set the size to fifty percent, and then right here we're going to when I receive the start game. So when I receive start game, we are going to wait one second. So usually we want to wait one second so both players are ready in the beginning. So we're gonna wait one second before starting the game. I go again a forever loop. So we're going to make an remember the variable. We make a new variable called ball speed ball speed so basically the ball speed is basically how fast the ball will move so now we have to make a uh, new custom block before we move on to this part so we need the ball speed to make this to change the speed of the ball so we'll need the ball speed because like remember I said when the timer increases we will increase the speed of the ball so that's why we'll need that so we're gonna make a new block we're gonna name it set up uh, ball. So set up ball. Okay. So we're gonna have to define it. So in set up ball, we are going to go to zero zero, which is the center of the screen, the origin of the coordinate plane. So zero zero, and then we're going to if else. So basically, this is a pick random of which side the ball is gonna go to. So if 
we're gonna pick random. So we're gonna need equal, so we're gonna pick random right here. So pick random one to two, and if it's equal to one, then we are going to point the direction of 60, which is this right side. So as you can see, see the direction right here, 60, so it's gonna point this way. So we're going to point direction of 60. Yeah. Um, else, we're going to point direction of negative 60. So we'll point the opposite direction. Negative 60, and then we're going to reset the timer. So remember I said that we're going to need the timer later, so we're going to have to reset the timer. And then we're going to set the ball speed to 10. So in the beginning, ball speed will be 10. And we're going to obviously need to use this block to use this. So we're going to run it right here. Okay, and then next, let's go back to our start game script right here. So we're going to move the amount of ball speed steps. So whatever this is, whatever the value of this variable is. And then we're going to get an if on edge bounce. So if it's, on the, if it's touching the edge, it'll bounce. And if the ball is touching, if it's touching player one or AI the sprite, touching player one or AI the sprite, then it's going to start sound pop, just like the basic pop sound. Oops. And uh, and then it's going to turn. We're going to make it turn. So if it's touching this paddle, it's going to turn this way. So it's going to always move this way. So we're going to make it turn 170 to 270 degrees. To 270 degrees. And then... I'm going to get another if then statement and put it inside this one. So if if uh, the direction is greater than negative 179, so if it's like past this part, or the direction is less than negative 1, which is like right here. So if it's less than negative 1, like on this side. So it's like somewhere between here and here. The direction is greater than negative 179 or ne negative one, so negative one's about right here, then it's going to, we're going to get this, or we're going to do, it's greater than, so the direction is greater than negative 179, or it's less than negative one, direction less than negative one then we are going to point in direction of 60 to 145 so it'll be pointing this way so the ball will be traveling to this side so point direction of 60 to 145 so basically 60 to 145 would be like somewhere right here to somewhere right here so it'd be like here to here, so like basically pointing from this side going either this way or this way. So let me set it back to 90. Okay, so and then next after this, we want to broadcast the message ball position. Remember, ball position. So basically, ball position is just going to position the ball, like keep track of where the ball is. And then we're going to get an if then statement. So another one. So if the x position is greater than 288, 288 is like right here. If it's greater than it, so it's like towards this point. If x position is greater than 288, 228, sorry, 228, not 288. Um, we're going to have to change the player one score by one because the ball is past this area. So that means it's touching this side. So that means player one will get a point. So player one, gonna have to change the player one score by one, and we're gonna have to call the variable set up ball again after the point is over, and then we're gonna wait one second before starting up again, and then we're gonna do ball position. Basically, we can just duplicate this, put it under. If ball position, if x position, we're gonna to change this around. I'm gonna do this so it's easier to see. So if x position is less than negative uh, 228, which is the left side, then that means we're going to change the player 2 score by 1 because they scored on player 1. And this is just the same. Alright, 
So this is what we have so far for this and this. All right. So next, we want to work on the ball position. We're going to receive the message. So when this sprite receives the message ball position, we're going to repeat until touching the player one. So the ball is going to repeat until it's touching the player one or AI. So this is just to keep track of where the ball is. So uh, we're going to get a repeat until. And then we're going to get a touching player one or the AI. And we're going to uh, make a new variable. We're going to name it ball y. So ball y is the y position of the ball. So we're going to set the we're going to set the ball y to the floor of y position. So basically, we don't want any decimal numbers. So we're going to round down, which is the floor. So we, we just have to get the absolute value one. Select the floor, which is rounding down. Oh, it's right here. It's in alphabetical order. So we're going to get the y position right here. So the floor of the y position, whatever the y position is. And we're going to keep track of this every 0 0.1 seconds. So yeah. Oops, all right, uh, so basically, so that is it for the ball code. That's basically it. So I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can take a look at it. I'm gonna go down a little bit. So yeah, okay, that's, and that's pretty much it for the ball. We might come back and add some other stuff, like maybe increasing the speed when the um, timer increases. All right. I'm going to uncheck these variables real quick, and you can do this to represent the score for each side. All right, double click on them. Remember, you can double click on them to do that. Let me make this back to zero. All right, there you go. So that's how you make it like that. You have to have to double click, or you can just right click on it. OK, and then next, let's go back to the uh, paddles. Let's go to the paddles. So inside the paddle for the player one or AI, I'm going to go when green flag clicked. Zoom in a little. When green flag clicked, we are going to go to the X position, negative 200, and Y position of zero. So it's like right here. And then when I receive uh, player versus AI, then we are going to get a forever loop. Forever if on edge bounce. So basically the the paddle won't like go off the screen, it will just like bounce on the sides. So we're gonna get a if on edge bounce and repeat until the y position is equal to the ball y. Alright, so right now we want to make the y position of the paddle is equal to the ball y because we want the AI to like be like to the relative position of the ball to try to like hit it back. So we are going to do when, if the y position, repeat until the y position is equal to the ball y. The y this is the y position of the paddle, by the way. And we're going to get an if-else statement. So if-else, put it in here. If y position is greater than the ball y, y position, so if the y position is greater than the ball y, so that means the paddle is like up here, and the ball is like down here, so it's like below it. Then we're going to move the paddle down. So we're going to have to do change the y by negative 8. Because the paddle is above the ball, so you want to move it down. Else, you want to change it by positive 8, because then the ball y would be over, until, like, up here, and the paddle will be down here. So you want to move the AI paddle up. And then we're going to get an if then statement. So if the score, player 1 score, Oops. Player one score is equal to seven. So we're gonna do first to seven. Player one score is equal to seven. Then we will broadcast a message called player one wins. Player player one, one wins. And then we are going to duplicate this. Right click duplicate. When I receive player versus player, if on edge bounce, we can remove this part and remove this part we can keep this bottom part don't delete it we'll get two if then statements so if we're going to do w and s for the movement so if key w is pressed 
W is pressed, then we're gonna move, change the Y by 8, let's duplicate this, and if the key S is pressed, oops, S is pressed, then we're going to change the Y by negative 8, and we're gonna put this in, in the bottom. Okay, so now we have the movement for the AI in the player 1, let's move on to player 2. Let's go to our player 2 sprite. So for the position for player 2, since this one is negative 200, 0, we're going to make this one positive 200. So we're going to get a 1 green flag clicked, and we're going to do go to x 200 and y 0. And what I'm going to do is just go in here and drag and drop this into player 2, so then I can just instantly duplicate it here. So instead, right here, we're going to do when I receive start game, because there's no AI for player 2. It's just the player. And forever, if on edge bounce, this code should all be the same except for this. So we're going to do up arrows and down arrow instead. And this one should be player 2 score is equal to 7. Then we're going to broadcast another message. And we're going to name it player 2 wins. Okay. So player 2 wins. And we can make a you win uh, sprite. So basically, we can just make a new sprite. Okay, so now we're going to make the you win and you lose part for this thing. So we just made a new sprite painted. And then we're going to use red because it's easy to see. And then for the first one, we're going to do player one or AI wins. If you want to add like player one wins and AI wins separately, then you have to broadcast another message within the paddle. So I'm going to go into here, code. And basically, instead right here, you just do player, the AI wins right here, and then player one wins right here. So basically, that's pretty much it. And then we're going to increase the size of this. Maybe a little bit bigger. And then we're going to duplicate this. This one is player one, player one, or AI. And this one we will do called the player two. And we're going to delete this and put player two wins. Move this right here, make it a bit bigger. Okay, that's great. Alright. So that's pretty much what we want. Let's go to the code for this thing. When green flag clicked, we go to zero zero. So we're to the center in the beginning. And then we're gonna hide. And then we're going to, when I receive player 2 wins, then we're going to switch costume to the player 2. And then we're going to show, and then we're going to stop all. So basically, it's going to switch costume to player 2 wins, if we, player 2 wins. And then we're going to stop all. We can just duplicate this, and when player 1 wins, we're going to switch costume to player 1 or AI, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so now... We can add some last minute like touches on the game. So we can just add different colors for the button. Maybe we can make this one just the normal one, but this one we can make it a different color because we can uh, just make it look better in general. So we're gonna make it like maybe yellow. Yeah, we can make it yellow. Or you can use the this thing so you can mix different colors. Uh, let's mix like some like this color, I guess. This color looks pretty good. Yeah, see that? Yeah. And maybe on the outside we can do like blue. Maybe like swap it. There you go. Maybe you can use this one. Yeah, this one makes it like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the buttons. And then next we can go to the, what was it? The, I think it's the ball. Yeah, inside the ball. We can do the the um, timer thing. So we'll zoom in. When I receive the start game, so when I receive start game, we're going to forever. Uh, we're gonna if timer is greater than twenty. So if the timer is greater than twenty seconds, maybe we can do ten just for testing purposes. Uh, we're going to set the ball speed to 12, so we're going to increase the speed by a little bit. And we can just duplicate this. And if the timer is greater than 20, 
I guess we can do 15. This, and you can add even more and more. You can just keep on doing it forever if you wanted. But yeah, we're just going to put 2 for now. I actually forgot to put the player 2 in. Because we're working on everything else, I forgot to use this one. So we're going to have to do the detection for player 2 as well. So we are going to actually duplicate all of this. And delete this. And we just take this out. And put this under right here, and then we'll put this in after. So first, we are going to do if touching player two. We're going to do the pop sound as well, but instead of turning to the right, we're going to have to turn to the left because it's player two. You hit to the left side, so we're going to turn to the left and put this in. And then if it the direction is like that, greater than one seventy nine instead because this is. The other side, so we're going to have to do 179 and the direction is less than 1. Then we are going to point in direction of negative 60 because you have to face the left side, not the right, because we're on the right side already. So we're going to do that and then broadcast ball position, and then just put this on the bottom. You can also take this out. This is not very necessary because we already have it down here, it's not very necessary for the AI. We already have it down here, so you can take that out as well. So, let's go play the game. So since we forgot to do the player 2 code, I'm going to like show you all of the code. So then you can take down any code you did not do earlier. So, that's pretty much it. Okay, so now I think we can demonstrate the game. Alright, so let's do player versus AI first. So you can see the AI is going towards the ball. Everything's working out fine. You can see, I think the ball is moving faster because the timer. Forgot to turn on the AI. See, the ball is going way quicker now. See that? Yeah. So yeah, uh, now let's try out the player versus player. I think it should be the same. Oh, I forgot to hide that thing as well. Wait, let me... How did that not connect? Okay, I don't know why. But, okay, whatever. It should, I already, it should have been like that. I don't know how it disconnected. But, okay, player versus player. Yeah, so basically just like that. Yeah, okay, now let me score on one person first. So then we can finish this. So I can show you what happens if you win or lose. You need seven to win. Okay, right, that's it. So when you win, it's just this player two wins. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.